What's up? I'm Brody Vincent. I'm the host of Profession Session, and I just spent 52 weeks doing 52 interviews with all kinds of different professionals across all kinds of fields. I've had a blast doing it. I to congratulate you on one year. I've learned so much, and today I'm going to share with you the 52 biggest takeaways from these interviews. You're going to want to stay tuned because these just get better and better as they go on. But first, to talk a little bit about why I did this, I want to show a quick word from a personal hero of mine in the business world that I think kind of encapsulates the reason why I decided to do this and have kept doing it. I learn more now than I ever have because I'm exposed to more businesses at a higher level. I believe that the purpose of life is to learn. Um, that is my purpose of life. Then enabling myself to learn in as many ways as humanly possible to maximize myself. I want to learn how solar sales work. I want to learn how mortgage sales work. Like knowing a lot about a lot of things allows you to cross-pollinate ideas that work well in one industry and then apply them to another one and then get outside of I kind of just looked around me and saw that I knew a lot of cool people doing cool stuff who also knew cool people doing cool stuff and I could learn from them and apply it to my own pursuits. So I set out to answer the question, what is a professional? Getting right into it, the first one was about sales. Now this applies to everyone because no matter what you do, whether it's in sales or out of sales, you're selling yourself or you're selling something. But of course, this is even more applicable for you if you're promoting some kind of product or service in what you do. People's bulk meters are way, way higher than you think they are and when you're coming to talk to someone about anything that they might be buying. The gauge is on 10, they're looking for the lie. They have those walls up immediately. Yeah, and you gotta know that, and there can't be any aversion to that. That is their job. They are supposed to put the walls up. Assuming you have a good, legitimate product, you really shouldn't hit any friction. They're gonna ask their questions, and you should have legitimate answers for them, and it should be pretty much that simple. If you don't believe it, you will not be able to make someone else believe it. You have to believe in what you're selling. It's that simple. If you don't, find something else to sell. And the next one's pretty simple. It's really just about how you feel about what you do for work. You have to enjoy it and if you don't then find something else that you enjoy see how far you can go with it because there's so many opportunities i found this to be so true find something you love doing and i guarantee you'll find a work ethic you didn't even know you had this is especially cool for any kind of service providers this is just a cool take on how you can succeed through specialization and automation of your services you have to have a scope of work we can't just offer everything we have to mm -hmm. pick a certain thing and be good at it and that's kind of where we fell into the idea of like a monthly route basically or subscription almost I mean, it's a good model you have a better idea of what you're going to make every month now the next one hits especially hard for me because over the last couple of years i've been really burned by a business partner but i've also found others that i would go the distance with Here's how you should be thinking about going into business with someone. If you don't want to work with a person for 10 plus years, then don't even try to go into business with them at the start. A business partner is like a spouse. Don't attach yourself to someone that you won't stay with long term because it just won't work out. Now this next one kind of depends on who you are as a person, but I really think these principles apply to a lot of different things. When I go around and telling people, oh, I'm going to start a business, right? They're kind of already expecting great things. And then they give you that pat on the back, like, hey, great job, you started a business. But here's the deal, you get all these great jobs and because I'm a people pleaser it's like feeding my battery right right so now i'm like oh i did such a great job i did a, such a great job but guess what you haven't done it yet mm -hmm. you don't deserve the good job i don't want to get all that instant gratification because the whole point of working on something it's all about doing it and if i already feel like i got the recognition for doing it then i'm not going to really work as hard to go and do it sometimes it's just better to work on something quietly and then talk about it when it's done it could be more gratifying too if you're looking to buy a house to live in you might be able to make more by renting it out instead and you can especially leverage this if you're actually looking at a second home. Our first Airbnb property. What creates right now, I would say, a monthly passive income of about $15,000. We have a property manager, which is either 20 or 25% of the net profit we have. So if I take that off the bottom line, so we are okay. completely hands off. We don't get phone calls. I would say the only uh, involvement we have is when we got to buy new furniture, do something to the house itself to bring it up. I've actually since set this up with a couple of partners, and we're actually working its way up to making it passive, and it's working pretty well. This is huge for anyone that's currently managing someone or wants to work their way up to managing. You have to pick your battles as a manager. When something is constantly an issue, you have to sit down with the person and respectfully tell them why it's an issue instead of just yelling at them or making them feel bad about it because if they don't understand like the repercussions of it, they're just gonna do it again. Management can be really tough. It takes honesty and transparency and people need to know why their actions might have consequences and also why that matters. But don't bruise their ego because that really won't go a long way. One thing I cannot emphasize enough and has been so true for me is just the importance of putting yourself out there and getting involved in things. My biggest thing is when I was an intern, I didn't say no to anything. 
I didn't say no to one event. My boss had asked, would I work the UCF game? And it was like a prime tailgate. Everyone's gonna go have fun. We did all of that. We were packing up and then our CEO was going to the box and then we were talking and then he asked if I wanted to go up with him. So then I was in the suite with just the CEO and I got to talk to him one-on-one -on -one as an intern. And if I had said no to the opportunity, I would have never had that one-on-one -on -one time with him. Every time I've decided to put myself out there, even when I didn't feel like it, it's really paid off. Doing so really just gives yourself more at-bats to find more opportunities. It is so important to be aligned with your personal goals. You use what you've been blessed with and what you're good at for your purpose. Mm -hmm. Like You don't want to keep your eyes off your purpose. My goal is to keep my purpose as my priority, and I'm going to make sure my passion goes along with my purpose. Find your purpose and use your natural skills to move towards it. Now, this next industry has taken a little bit of a hit, but I think the important point here is that the applications of this technology provide a lot of opportunity going forward. The real value behind an NFT is based on its smart contract. How it was made, how many of it was made, and what it can do for you is trackable through something called a smart contract. So I can prove that to the future buyer and the buyer after that, and 10 buyers down the road, like a Carfax report. The real aspect that makes it applicable so widely is the fact that you can track everything that's happened with this NFT and everything that people have done with it since its creation. So you can see who it's gone to and for how much. This next one actually touches a lot on why I decided to start the podcast and why I feel like it's been a good choice. In 2008, when the financial crisis hit, many organizations were just gone. What people really found was that if they didn't have a personal brand, and now all of a sudden you've associated your name with that to the extent that you don't have a personal identity. How are you going to be able to find somebody to consider your skill set for their organization? Now, this doesn't mean just quit your job and start a business immediately, but you should make sure to establish yourself outside of what you're just currently doing for work. Anyone wanting to buy a home for the first time or ever needs to know this really basic stuff. It's never too soon to start planning to buy a house. There could be little things on your credit that can be cleaned up in two or three months. If you're thinking of buying a house next year, now is the time to start talking to someone. The first person to talk to if you're getting a loan is the mortgage person. Come up with a budget that you're comfortable with. Be prepared to have the documents. Go ahead and start a file and keep it updated with two of everything. Two years tax returns, two months bank statements, two paycheck stubs. Get started early. The process moves fast for those who want to do this right, so you should be prepared. Who you decide to spend your time with is going to influence you a lot more than you think. When I bring on guests, I try to think of who is someone that's doing more in their life than just the absolute bare minimum of just working and going home. It's also people who, you know, contribute to society as a whole. I'm here to show you case an individual that I think is interesting and maybe you can get inspired by what they do to help out society as a whole. Choosing to spend your time around the types of people described here can go a long ways in improving yourself. Have you ever heard that there's no shortcuts to success? Well, that's not true at all if you don't try to reinvent the wheel. I think a lot of people out there try to start from scratch and it can take a lot longer. If you look at someone, your future self, right? Someone that's doing what you want to do successfully. How did you get there and how are you doing it today? That's invaluable information that they're giving you compared to a $20 lunch. I'll pay that every time, $100, whatever it looks like. I was able to build relationships and look at some of the experts that have been doing this successfully and I learned very quickly how to do it, tailored it to my own style. And that's how I was able to be successful. Those shortcuts are out there. Just be bold and go out and ask for them in the right places. If you want to stay on top of things in business, you've got to be around other hustlers. I mean, that is what it is. If the people around you don't have that same vision, your vision's not going to work. By networking with other like-minded people that just think business, you're able to find opportunities. Talk to other people that are driven to succeed and I guarantee you'll find more opportunities. Opportunities. It's been the case for me again and again and again. For anyone like me trying to beat their own path. Being an entrepreneur is so hard because you have your ups and downs. Be confident and keep going. My freshman year of college, when I literally made like no orders, spent all my money, I was just like, I'm not going to do this. And then sophomore year, I completely turned around. So I would just say, keep going. Do not get discouraged because it is easy to get discouraged in this field. Be confident, sell as much as you can, and then be in front of people as much as you can as well. It's a long-term game trying to succeed in entrepreneurship. Anytime you get discouraged, it's really important to remember the long-term term goal and remind yourself that it really just takes time. There's a reason that so many wealthy people own real estate. I love real estate. It's a great wealth builder. Over a long time horizon, it's been proven again and again to appreciate if you pick it right. This can be leveraged really well to use your money to grow itself more and more. If you're trying to be successful, it's simply not going to come to you handed on a silver platter. I'm pretty self-motivated. I'm going to make something even if nobody yeah. wants me to. That's going to make you stand out. If you're just sitting waiting for orders, you're not going to get anywhere. Taking initiative is the best way to differentiate yourself. Those who stand out pave the way for themselves. If you're constantly striving for growth, it's a sure thing that you'll find 
find yourself experiencing some imposter syndrome along the way. I feel like everybody who has imposter syndrome or has had or whatever it always like works so hard to get there. It's always like those down to earth people that seem to experience it the most, which is so funny. I think getting through it was kind of just faking it till I make it. Wearing blazers to work and high heels <laughs> kinds of helps and you know, just throw your shoulders back and acting like you belong there. There's no good way to defeat it except just continuing to move forward until you prove it wrong. If you're not taking advantage of finding mentors to help you out along the way, you're missing out. Mentors really help elevate the education that you've learned and take you to a place that helps you understand what you're doing for work at a deeper level. Seeking those people out that really want to educate you and you can feel it when you're talking to them and then you present your work to them. When you find those people, you want to gravitate towards them and get more feedback from them and continually put yourself in a position to be critiqued. If you fight it, they aren't going to want to do that. Yeah. You just have to be able to swallow your pride and be open to the experience. Humbling yourself enough to learn something pays massive, massive dividends. I'm talking a lot about working hard here and that's important, but it's also important to have balance. I was just like, if I'm not charging, I'm worthless. It wasn't so much discipline as it was relentlessness. I was relentlessly pursuing not feeling a certain way. And I learned discipline does really help with that. You don't have to be relentless all the time. Mm -hmm. You can be very disciplined and relaxed. But if I'm very disciplined, it's not about worth at that point. It's just about balancing and enjoying the things that come. Not having some kind of balance that works for you is simply just not sustainable. Doing something that just really resonates with you for work is an infectious positivity to have in the best way. When you meet people that have like a, a really strong drive and you can tell that they sincerely mean the line of work that they're in, that's like a very special attribute to have. So anyone listening, like if there's something that you really feel passionate about or you notice I'm a lot more happy when I do this and I'm like I'm very knowledgeable about this, I would encourage anyone out there that's trying to figure out what they want to do for their career. To kind of if you can take inventory of yourself and figure out what that is for you personally and figure out a way to do it, you'll thank yourself later. If the world had people that did more of what they cared about, it would be a less shit place and I put that on my last dollar. Two people work at places that they hate and they come in grumpy and they go home grumpy to their spouses and they hate it, they hate it, they hate it. Do what you love. Whether it be painting, making magazines, making podcasts, playing soccer, football, whatever. Just do what you love. Not finding that thing for yourself can have negative effects in a lot of ways and you really don't want that to play out long term. For any professional pursuit, you need to make sure you take it seriously to have success. If you are getting paid to do something, you finish the job. We agreed on this, whether it be for money, whether it be for a trade, whatever it may be. If you say you're going to do something, go through with it and actually do it. For me, it's that simple. That for me is being a professional. It's that simple. In the pursuit of success, you're not always going to feel 100% motivated. The difference between successful people and non-successful people is they feel the exact same way, but they just act differently. Somebody who has major success has the same feelings of like, man, I just really don't feel like doing this today. They both experience the same thing. The difference is this one just decides, okay, I don't feel like it, so I'm just not gonna do it, right? Whereas this one says, nope, I made a commitment to this. I have to show up. I'm gonna do the things I don't feel like doing. They become more successful than everyone else because they're willing to do the things that other people are not willing to do. Showing up more than others are willing to just builds on itself more and more over time. Being a true professional requires a pretty special mix of things. There are plenty of people who have skill sets that they can't leverage yeah. into a living, and there are plenty of people that make livings but have absolutely no skill in what they do. Both those categories are not professional. I think if you cover the Venn diagram, you hit both. It's something you have skills in, true skills that other people can't replicate, and you can make money with them, you're a professional. In your pursuit of being one, you should be thinking not only how do I continue to hone my skills, but also how do I continue to monetize them consistently? Focusing on the right things is really, really crucial. 50% of your life is fact, factual, what's happening. The other half is fate. If you put 100% in of your 50, and 100% of the fact, then fate's going to deliver what it needs to to you. 50% things that you can control and 50% things that you can't control. If something didn't work out for you, there's probably a reason. If you try to control everything or try to control nothing, you're gonna fail. You're way better served employing your efforts more strategically. How you face up to challenges and hardships is going to have a lot to do with the longevity of your success. Live your life as if somebody's filming a documentary of you. Every time in our lives that we went through something hard, we would just tell each other, hey, it's just making your movie better. My favorite thing was those obstacles they had to overcome made the documentary better. Taking these hardships in stride and letting them fuel you for better things is just a better approach. One of the best ways to build goodwill with others is by offering value first with no strings attached. The law of reciprocity 
reciprocity basically means, you know, what's given will, will move back. When you hear the law of reciprocity, it sounds just like a big, like, you know, scientific term or something mm -hmm. like that. But really all that means is when you give something of value, it's going to come back to you, whether it's from that person or somewhere else. Giving away things and knowledge for free really does bring itself back in different ways. I've found this to be so true again and again. Lead with value for someone first and it will come back. Social media is a really powerful tool, whether you use destructively or constructively. Being smart about the way that you use it can really build a lot of value for you. The only skill you really, really need on LinkedIn is to learn. Build your feed to a point where you're consuming content people who are better than you. At some yeah. If you want to get good at writing or email marketing, let's say, you follow the top creators. You just search up on the LinkedIn search bar. You find the top 10, 20 creators who write about it every single day. You see what they're writing. They give free tips on LinkedIn. It's a college degree for free. You can really hone your focus and be intentional with your learning by curating the places that you put your attention the most. A lot of sales is just a collection of little tricks and tools that help you influence decisions in a desired direction. Neurolinguistic programming are words or phrases that are specifically geared to elicit a certain type of thought or emotion from the person you're talking to. So the best example that I think you can use is when someone says, well, let's pop a top. You're generally going to be gearing up for a story. You're going to stop talking, you're going to quiet down, you're going to expect them to be telling you a tale. Those words naturally elicit a reaction in someone else. Another example that I like to use is when you say a lot of people. So if I say like a lot of people are going solar and a lot of people really benefit from this project and a lot of people have learned ways they could save money, you're not really going to notice unless I point it out. We're not speaking to your conscience, we're speaking to your subconscious to gear it up to receive certain types of information. Just make sure you use these to create positive change and not for evil. There are so, so many parallels to take from sports and apply it to your career. We have a sports mentality and one of our favorite players is Kobe. Mm -hmm. And that's something you can bring into any niche, any career field, any profession is that mama mentality, dedication. We write down our goals and it's about executing. I think it's a really good approach to kind of treat your career or any pursuit that you're in like you're an athlete and that's your sport. Treating your career like your sport means making sure that you're always, always ready to perform and continually learning how to get better and better. One thing I continue to realize as I get older and older is that you really are a product of the people that you keep around you. I think everyone has greatness in them. Unlocking is hard. I think I've shown myself and I've shown others little spurts of greatness because I see people believe in me and I see how people treat me when I'm not doing the things I should be doing. The people who, who believe in me and see what I see in myself are kind of disappointed. The people who have high expectations of me see the potential in me. And sometimes I don't even see the potential. No one can reach their full potential on their own. You've got to keep people around you that can see your potential, but also expect you to reach it. As an early business owner, there are a lot of traps that are really, really easy to fall into. If you're anything like me, it's hard to fight the desire to want to just outsource everything and move to the next thing. Don't outsource things. Figure out how to do it yourself. There's a time it takes to truly get momentum. When you're a startup with limited capital, there's a lot of hidden costs that you overlook. And then when you get past a certain point, then you can afford the marketing. At the very beginning, you don't have a ton of capital. You're digging yourself a deeper hole because it usually there's, there's some time before that money comes back around. I've found personally with my own business that it really was better to start by bootstrapping my growth and really just putting a lot of sweat equity in on the front end to minimize risk and lower the investment that it took to start. Another thing that's been continually reinforced for me is the power of speaking your desires into action. I learned people can't read your mind. A lot of people think that it's very clear what your ambitions are. Like, I would think everyone wants to move up, right? Everyone wants to do this or that. That's not the case, and the manager won't treat you like that if you don't bring it up. So I yeah. kind of just made sure every single person that I worked with at a higher level knew my intentions. I believe in manifesting to a degree. To be more specific, I think confiding in the right people can help influence your actions in the right direction and achieve what you're trying to do. I've found that sustaining success is very much about finding the right balance for yourself personally. Fixed mindset is this is how I am and I don't have the ability to change this. Now growth mindset is of course the exact opposite. It's I have the ability to improve this. I have the ability to change this. It's actually very important to have both of them. It's more realistic too when it comes to performance. Being able to merge a fixed and growth mindset is understanding these weaknesses are probably not ever going to turn into my true natural strengths. So why would I spend 100% of my time on those? My strengths, I can continue to get better at. Now this isn't to say that you should ignore your weaknesses entirely, and especially if they're problematic, but I think this is a good framework to help you just perform better. Getting through hardships has a lot to do with the mindset that you take going into it. Life is 10% about what happens and 90% about how you respond. If something comes at you and you didn't expect it, you can either pity yourself and 
act like a victim or you can puff up your chest and just say, hey man, like this happened for me. I'm gonna find a way to turn this into my superpower to overcome it. I've faced some tough, tough stuff over the last couple of years. Taking a mindset like this into it though has helped me continually come out stronger and more well-equipped to face life's challenges. I think it's important to take time to think about and understand your personal reasons for wanting what you want. The whole goal ultimately is financial freedom and that's why I wanted to work for myself because I just didn't ever see that happening with me working a nine to five corporate job. I just felt like I was working towards somebody else's goals. I wanted to work because I want to work, not because I have to work. I don't want to feel that struggle and if I want to take a two week vacation fishing trip somewhere. I want to have that option. Thinking of things in these terms helps you work harder to build the life that you want. It's not easy to do, but finding perspective like this just brings you more and more drive. Transparency and honesty will always, always take you further than deceit. I am incredibly honest. And I think that is the reason why I'm at the point that I am right now is that I'm not this Johnny salesman that's just trying to tell you what you want to hear. If I end up being in a situation where I'm putting a certain kid in front of a coach that I know that they're not going to offer this kid, right? Nor are they even going to pay attention to this kid. If I start doing that too often, coaches are going to write me off real quick. They're going to stop answering my text messages. They want reliable information because just like anybody else, there's so much time in the day. Success relies on partnerships, friendships, and relationships, and you won't keep any of these if you burn them with dishonesty. I choose honesty as often as I can because it builds the kind of reputation that I want to have. I think a lot of people struggle with drive in their career because they feel like they're only doing it because they need money. The seven layer why. For any job you're doing or any career, anyone at home can do it with themselves. Ask yourself, why are you doing your career? Why are you doing your job? For most people, quickest answer is money. And then you go through seven layers of asking yourself why to the whatever the answer is to the last question. So it's why do you want money? As you start getting deeper, you start realizing there are really psychological reasons behind what you want to do. But you wouldn't believe how few people really understand what motivates them and why it motivates them. The reality is that your motivations for stuff run a lot deeper than you think. And the more you can get in touch with that personally, the more you'll watch yourself fight for what you want. For anyone inexperienced, I cannot emphasize enough the power of just providing a lot of value to someone with experience. Being irreplaceable is humbling yourself. If you're under someone with a lot more experience than you, you're valuable by freeing their time. Doesn't matter how great you think you are. I'll only ask him for something if I tried and I can't figure it out or I know that him giving me an answer will take 10 seconds. Not putting extra stuff on someone and being able to take it off instead is probably the most valuable thing you could do. This is the reason I'm a partner in a really successful company at only 26 years old. I led with an overabundance of value and that built equity in the relationships and partnerships that I had, and it continued to drive us going forward. But there's more than that to why our business has been successful. I think Mark Cuban, he's a really big advocate of this, building the business without paying yourself anything. The nicer car, I didn't care. So you have just strictly cash flow that you can just keep reinvesting it back into the business. Double your money every time, every time, every time. Just keep reinvesting it. Eventually, if you continue to just kind of recycle that over and over and over again, now I can take a step back and I can comfortably be taking money. Most people aren't willing to do that because they don't want to go through that uncomfortable stage of working basically two jobs. Obviously very, very tough and very time consuming. But if you can't do that in the front end, then it's never going to be successful. That's exactly what we did. My partner Andy that you saw there and I didn't pay ourselves for the first year and a half of operations of the business, even when it started making money. Now it pays our salaries and it continues to grow. If you're pursuing something ambitious, you really just have to figure out how to get more done in less time. People don't realize how much time they actually have. I've really had to work on how to bend time. I have every single airport membership you can think of to get the security quicker. If I can get a rental car 30 minutes quicker, it really means something. If I can get an earlier flight, it's worth the extra money. So I'm willing to pay the money to be able to get that chunk of time back so I can either get where I'm going quicker or not. Putting an actual dollar value on time and being able to justify spending X amount more, sometimes way more, to be able to be where you need to be is very important to me. I help myself make a lot of decisions by attaching an hourly rate to my time. If cooking a meal between the prep, the cooking, the dishes and everything is going to take an hour of my time, I would probably rather just get a $12 Chipotle bowl and keep working. Understanding and maintaining yourself are paramount for long-term goal achievement. 
how you spend your time and your day and your focus, what you're focusing on is going to impact what the next day, week, year looks like. Your focus matters. And it goes back to camera perspective. If you're out of focus, that shot's worthless. Why are you wasting your equipment that you've invested in already to get an out of focus photo? How do you readjust when you're finding yourself a little out of focus? Finding time to yourself. Find time to grow. Being with you. Taking some time to step away from it. Do the things that you like doing. The hobbies that you have. Probably brings you back more focus. Finding the right ways to readjust for yourself can really help you maintain focus and avoid burnout. Being more successful than your competition means being more well-informed and more knowledgeable. I hate to say it, but whenever I'm driving, I really don't listen to music anymore. While I'm working, it's on YouTube, it's on podcasts, it's on audiobooks. Watching Gary V, Cody Sanchez, Alex Ramosi, watching their content and I can just soak it in and replicate. Great success requires some sacrifice. Being able to keep yourself more and more educated gives you advantages that make you unbeatable. At the same time, it's not efficient to take the approach of only working harder. You should also work smarter. The future is already here. It's just not evenly distributed. Mm. That's so true of ChatGPT, right? Like yeah. I would say that probably 90% of people don't even know it's out yet. I've been having it do all kinds of stuff. You could have it write business plans. You could have it write an essay for you. It's already written blog posts for me mm -hmm. and the stuff I'm working on. If it's a blog post or if it's an email, if it's whatever, I don't need it to be perfect. I don't need yeah. it to be poetry. If it can do 80, 90% as good as you were going to do yeah. in 0.5% of the time. Well, the hard part for me is like the blank page. For me to just say like, give me something to start with and then let me take it from two to 10. That's the cool part is you can just say like, based on that, figure this out. It's very good at distilling things down. There's new AI technology coming out and being refined every day. Ignoring it or being scared to try it is just going to guarantee that you leave your success in the past. It's easy to get caught up in writing everything off that you can if you own a business. Buying a house for someone who doesn't have an actual W-2 clock in clock out job to prove what you need to prove to be able to buy a home hardest thing in the whole entire world it made us want to get an accountant she ended up starting us a corporation starting this whole system of us paying ourselves paychecks we were able to go two years without doing any write-offs even though we bought a bunch of crap that we could have written off we didn't write it off because we wanted to prove the income so we could buy a home once we bought the home now we're back to write-offs for young business owners and entrepreneurs this is really important Buying a home is a really big thing, and it's important that you take the challenges of being self-employed into account and plan accordingly. Complacency is the enemy of success. When you go to work, give it everything you got. Leave it all out in the field. We go home, we're like, I didn't do anything today. You know, it was such an easy day, and I got paid for it. And we brag about it to our friends. That's not cool. If we don't do the job, that's why we get let go. Or if the job isn't necessary to the company anymore, that's why you get let go. Do the job you're supposed to do. Be respectful of the money that you're getting. You may not like the money you're getting. It may not be enough for you. Somebody's paying you that. They don't have to. They can fire you. If you don't like the job, leave. Unemployment's like 3.6%. There's a lot of job openings. It's best to make it as easy as possible on yourself to succeed. Being highly intentional about putting yourself in a place that suits you can help you bring your best to the table consistently. Making data-driven decisions whenever possible can really help you move intentionally. Have you heard of the Clifton Gallup strength test? I haven't, no, what's okay. that? You go through this test and it asks you what your strengths are. And it basically identifies your five core strengths. It helps you tailor which jobs are better for you and your business. It's definitely helped me figure out which jobs would be more suited for me. Using tests and objective measures like this to really hone in on what works for you personally can really help you set yourself up for success. Getting caught up in the perceptions of others can really be paralyzing. Stop assuming people are worried about what you're doing. <laughs> no one's ever thinking about you as much as you are. It can stop you from moving forward sometimes, or you're, I'm not gonna do this because I feel stupid, or I look stupid. Trust your instincts. Just do whatever you think is best for you all the time. Ultimately, you know yourself better than anyone. Lead on that knowledge and allow it to guide you to the decisions that benefit you the most. There are proven methods to growing on social media that help you expand your reach, grow your brand, and get more clients, whether you have your own business, you work in business development, or you're just trying to grow. We live, preach, and breathe social media for client acquisition. Be the CEO of your social media, content, engagement, and outreach. You've got to post content as much as you can, as much different type of content as you can. Engage with all of your current friends on your timeline 
online, outreach. You gotta continue to add new friends. You gotta continue to outreach with new messages. If you just do all three of those every time you open up a social media app, you're bound to grow. You're bound to make new connections and stick to it 30, 60 days. You're gonna get some clients, I promise you. Having that personal brand in business is a cheat code. I think simply put, doing these things just helps you grow your brand and gives you more and better opportunities. After having over 60 hours of deep conversation with all kinds of people, you'd have to guess that my opinion of people has been either positively or negatively influenced and you'd be right. There's so much good in the world. I feel like the negatives are just so much louder. Love Humans that. are cool. <laughs> Humans are cool. They do a lot of cool things yeah. and a lot of good, but it's usually the bad that's like dramatized. The less that you get to be around people and engage with people, mm -hmm. the more you feel that loud negative force yeah. around you. The yeah. more you get to be with people, the more the good of humanity. Yeah. You kind of get that reinforced. Yeah. That, like, we have more in common than different too. It has made me fall back in love with like humanity. I started this because I love people and I love talking to people. And that's only grown stronger because of this. I really believe the more you focus on the positive, the better you'll feel, the better you'll do. Thank you so much for watching. If you got any value out of this, please go ahead and subscribe because I've got a lot more coming your way over this next year. Thank you.